Hi, I'm coming to y'all today to show you a gift I received from a wonderful sister in the craft. She's a dear friend of mine on Instagram. And lately I have had an illness. If you're friends with me on Instagram or Facebook, you know that I have been dealing with some issues trying to get those resolved. But she sent me this book to read on my path to recovery and it was a wonderful blessing because it is quite simply i believe it's going to be a great book so let's get into it and take a peek it's called the witch's journal charms spells potions and enchantments by celine silverwind isn't it pretty it's a hardback book and the inside is just amazing. It's full color and it's beautiful. It looks like an actual journal that one would make when they had started learning about the craft. And I really like the style and it's just really beautiful. Okay, I'm going to hold this up so you can see the table of contents. You can pause if you like to read or screenshot the actual Publication date, copyright date, was 2009, but this is a special edition, I assume, or, no, I'm not going to say special edition. This is, okay, here we go. This one was um, published in 2017 by a different publishing house, so the actual copyright is 2009, but this is the 2017 edition. There we go spit that out and we have the introduction could I love it anymore probably not it's fantastic and one thing that I really do like about the book is it begins with embarking on a magical path and it gives you a little insight here that is always valuable to new people who have decided they might want to look into the craft and it's also a great reminder to those of us who have been in the craft for a number of years. Learning the basics. I don't care how long you've been in the craft. A refresher course is always, always a plus. Because if you get to the point where you believe that you know pretty much everything there is to know, then there's a problem. In the craft, as in with everything with life, you are constantly learning. When you think you know it all, Therein lies your problem. This is fantastic. It teaches you a little about the basics. And I really like the way it looks. You know, it's like they put the little flower in there. They taped it in. It's just fantastic. I really love this book. This section tells you how to use the book. A little bit about different traditions. And here is something that she has written herself. It looks like it's paper clipped in. <laughs> and we have a little correspondence here, you know, just about how to use the book. What is magic? I love this section in every beginner's book. It basically tells you a little bit about, you know, what the author's idea of magic is here is the black magic versus white magic if that is something that you do identify with we have different types of magic folk natural ceremonial sympathetic witch or wiccan this is important to me i did read this and i want to read this to you it says Although you will hear the terms used interchangeably, witch and Wiccan actually mean two different things. A witch uses magic, also known as witchcraft, to manipulate the energy of the universe to achieve a desired goal. Anyone of any religion can be a witch. That is a very controversial thing to say, and not a lot of people are going to agree with that, but I do. Here is the Witch's Pyramid. And now we have a section on ethics, the reed, the golden rule, 
the law of three. Then there's questions to ask before casting a spell. And I did like this little tiny note. It should have been bigger. Four rules for magic. Let me autofocus. Do not cast a spell on another person without their permission. Do not cast a spell to harm yourself or another person. Do not cast a spell in haste. Do not cast a spell in anger. Now then, not all of us agree with these particular four rules for magic, but we can all say that there has to be at least one or two of them that we do agree with. I like that she's giving a backstory, kind of like with the law of three, karma, and be mindful, and be, you know, loving and caring to all involved. Magical Correspondences Here we have the colors. She said in one particular spot... And I did like this. Magic uses the most basic colors. No fuchsia or, I don't know, P-U-C-E here. Instead, you draw on the colors in the crayon box. Red, pink, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, gold, silver, brown, black, white. And it goes into the chakra colors, chakra healing things of this nature, incorporating colors into spells. And here is a fabulous section on the colors. Isn't it beautiful? More colors. Stones and crystals. Herbs. The magic of the heavens. The moon. I just want you all to get a basic overview of what the little chapters look like. And I'm really enjoying the way it's set up. I mean, it's just fabulous. The correspondence in this book is invaluable. It is amazing how she has it all laid out very neatly, very nicely. When to avoid magic. Some people don't believe in the void of course or they don't really worry about it or mercury retrograde but a lot of people do divine magic which pantheon choosing which pantheon to work with that's funny i don't see it saying anything to do with your dna or what's you know i cor correct myself Research your bloodline in this life. Find out how many cultures are mingled in your family tree. That means that you can go and look at what is actually in your family tree and choose from something there if you do resonate with it. Or you can go and research other pantheons to see if those resonate with you. Even ones that are not mixed in your bloodline. And I say this because I am, believe it or not, I have quite a bit of Cherokee blood in me. And um, quite a bit, I mean quite a bit. My grandmother was full blood, so, yes. So, um... <clears throat> But I don't resonate with 
Native American spirituality very much. I would love to be able to tap into that and to go with that, but I resonate more on my father's side with the Scottish and the Irish that he has. He's mostly Scottish and some Irish, but I resonate more with that particular side of my family. Also, I do work with, and I wish they would have had her, but Venus is okay. Um, I work with Aphrodite. She is my main number one gal. But this Venus is absolutely beautiful. The mother goddess. Oh, it's beautiful. This book is fabulous. It's just fabulous. Celtic deities. I can't wait to get into this one, as I've said. And the more that I show more of my library, my magical library, you will see I do have quite a bit of, not quite a bit, but I do have a few uh, very large um, books to do with Celtic, Celtic pantheons and Celtic deities and Celtic mythology. The Celtic goddess that I most most associate with is Bridget. Secondly would be the Morrigan. It's beautiful. Here we have the Teutonic deities. And I'm sure someone will correct me if I did pronounce that wrong. And if I did, I do apologize. This is a combination of both Germanic and Norse gods, the majority of which is working with these gods, consider them to be Norse deities. So this would be like Norse deities. Ah, Thor's hammer. I learned about Thor when I was in the fourth grade, and I had been fascinated with Thor since then. Um, I normally don't use many male entities in my work. If I do, Thor is a choice. Always way up there. Egyptian deities. I have the utmost honor and respect for Egyptian deities. And I wish that I did resonate with some, any, but sadly I do not. But Egyptian deities, there are so many and they are so iconic and beautiful and I do have a very deep fondness for anything Egyptian and here are our Greek and Roman deities the Greek pantheon and the Roman pantheon Venus and Aphrodite those are my girls Aphrodite is my main woman. I have nothing but respect for the mighty Aphrodite. Chinese deities. Quan Yin was a deity that I was working with at one time. I dreamed of her and I began to research her. I found a wonderful blog by a beautiful woman, but she doesn't do it anymore, about um, Quan Yin and Green Terra um, and other goddesses along those lines. But her Quan Yin section was absolutely amazing and quite beautiful and very well written. And I really resonated with Quan Yin on a deep level. But that time was quite short-lived, and it was always Aphrodite. Aphrodite has always been there. But I am going to enjoy reading up about the Chinese deities that she has listed. And here are our African deities. I know nothing of African deities, and I will enjoy reading about the African deities. Here's your major deities. I'm not going. Legba. <laughs> I 
Papa Legba. I am originally from an area where hoodoo is prevalent. So there's that. But yes, African deities, that will be very interesting to read. Hindu deities. I love me some Ganesh. I love Ganesh. I have a oracle deck. Um, oh, messages from Ganesh or something about it. I just I absolutely love the artwork. It's beautiful. I love it. I love the Hindu deities. And I'm just, I'm really going to enjoy this section here. I'm reading over it and I shouldn't. Brahma the Creator. Mm. God of knowledge and prosperity. Very nice. Okay. Magical and divinatory tools. I'm going to try to go through this because this video is going to be quite long. We have your types of tools. That's not going to work. I'm trying to do this carefully. Consecrating your tools. Candles. I am a candle magic junkie. Anyone who is a personal friend of mine knows. Athame. Wand. I am lucky to have a beautiful wand made by for me by another one of my beautiful sisters, my best friend, and it is amazing. Chalice. Cauldron. Broom. And your minor tools. We also have a section on unusual items. A witch ball. Altars. Preparing for divination. Tarot. Gorgeous. Runes. Scrying. Astrology. Numerology. And lastly are the spells. Now then, I am going to show you a few spells in here. And I hope that you do enjoy the ones I pick. First, you see there is a section on spell work. A section on the magic circle. Casting the circle. Spell ingredients. Manifesting spells. Banishing spells, friendship spells, healing spells. This is why she sent me the book for this spell, Spell to Mend a Broken Heart. If you are my close friend on Facebook or Insta, then you know um, why I would need this spell. But with my husband and my daughter with me I am on the mend and yes but this is why she sent it to me a spell to mend a broken heart here we have love potions healing potions and prosperity potions and there's the back of the book personally I think it's going to be a fantastic read from what I have read so far. I have read um, the beginning and part of some of the beginning chapters. I'm reading it all the way from cover to cover. You don't have to read it that way. It is basically a book of shadows. Um, oh, maybe it's kind of like 
here's the book of shadows you can start using this and then you begin to create your own either way you want to look at it it's a fantastic book the information included is absolutely essential some of her ideas about things are very powerful to me I hope that if you have the opportunity to pick up a copy of this book that you do it is a special book not just because my beautiful friend gifted it to me out of the goodness of her heart just to lift my mood and help me and give me something to read on my road to recovery it is essential I believe because the writing style is basic pure and good and Everyone can take something from this. It doesn't matter what path you walk, right, left, or in the middle. I really do think it's going to be a great book. What I've read so far is amazing. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I'm glad that you stopped by, and I'll speak with you again very soon. Bye for now.